Yeah, my name is Mark Fryer. I own and run a company called Cams Compressor Engineering Limited, based in St Ives in Cambridgeshire, although I'm from Cambridge originally, so we're in the compressed air industry. My responsibilities within the company are basically everything. Uh, I started the business 30 years ago as an engineer, and uh, as the business grew, um, my responsibilities grew. Um, and uh, I was doing everything at the beginning. And as the business has grown, I've able, been able to delegate different tasks to different people. And I have now employees to do some of those tasks, but I'm still responsible for everything that goes on from staff, buildings, customer suppliers, workload, finances, stock, health and safety, everything. <laughs> How did I get involved in the compressed air industry? It's a bit of a long story, but I've always had a mechanical, the knack, if you like to call it. And uh, I applied the knack with hobbies when I was a youngster. I was fortunate enough to get some work experience when I was at uh, Pinter Village College, which I loved. I was at uh, a bus company locally. From that, I uh, applied for an apprenticeship with Marshalls in Cambridge, and I was fortunate to get one of the six positions that were available that year. 600 applicants applied for um, and my position as a heavy goods vehicle mechanic uh, for, I fulfilled that for a four-year apprenticeship and another 12 months at Marshalls. I progressed to another company where I was offered promotion and more money so I became charge hand of a workshop for British Road Services in Cambridge for two and a half years. Got my HGV class one license and loved life. Laid on my back under a, under a lorry one day, rain running underneath me, diesel running down my arm. And I'm thinking, is this really what I want to do for the rest of my life? And that was a turning point for me. I wanted to do something different. And I didn't really know what to do. I was in the Territorial Army at the time as a REMI engineer, Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineer, part-time soldier, and decided that um, I'd continue on with the soldiering and the mechanical work, but I was open to suggestions. And I happened to have a friend who had a neighbor who worked for a compressor company that were looking for an, uh, an engineer. It sounded interesting, it sounded as though I could apply my natural mechanical abilities to this, this role. There was a vehicle involved, so it meant I, you could use a company vehicle. Uh, most of the work was on site, so I'd see different sites and meet different people, and I love variety got invited to uh, take the job immediately. So within a month, I was taking the job. Unfortunately, after 18 months, the company went bust. But I was keen. I'd really picked up all the skills to enable me to do the job. I loved the job. I decided to go on my own. So that was over 30 years ago now. And I've progressed to where I am now. Certainly wasn't mapped out, but my natural genes, the knack, whatever it is that I have got me where I am now. And I have no regrets. I love the job the bits and the people around me do as well so I love the variety I love the challenge I love meeting people um, I love applying my mechanical um, and electrical skills to problems that people uh, that have they have but actually I like helping people I guess that's something that's ingrained into me I like helping people and getting people out of trouble so to combine all those skills um, I'm doing my hobby I suppose it's my hobby and, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else um, and and to bring young people in and older people into the business and and share that passion my relationship with CRC is um, has, has been very successful um, and I'd like to grow on that even more when I did my apprenticeship I went to college um, it was in East Road in Cambridge it was a long while ago Things have changed a lot, but I, I enjoyed my college because I had the formal formal training and I met other apprentices um, while I was there. And they, even now I still keep in touch with a lot of those apprentices, which is nice. And a lot of those guys are you know, managers and owners of business. So that's a, something you can't imagine at that time. But CRC offer um, uh, professional training and qualifications with skilled tutors to enable our apprentices to progress and our apprentices learn through the college things that they wouldn't learn with us 
but we've also used CRC to find our trainees, our youngsters. And without CRC, we wouldn't have that. So we've had work experience and we're quite passionate about having work experience. Guys and gals come to us. Um, again, having been there myself as a work experience, I, I feel there's an element of payback, but I enjoy helping people and I enjoy offering people the opportunity to get some experience because at the end of the day, where else are they going to get it? They know about stuff at school. They know stuff about the hobbies. They don't know mum and dad, but they may not have any industry experience. But we like to give um, our work experience uh, members an opportunity to experience that taste. We've had two apprentices. We're so, so currently running with our 2019 apprentice, um, Jordan. He's a fantastic young man. He's doing very well. He's got a three-year apprenticeship with us. I work with him now and again, but we do have a dedicated skilled engineer that works with him. He's ex-Royal Engineers, very skilled himself and qualified, so it's great. And he's, he's kind of like me. He kind of we're, we're very similar characters. And we intend to bring on an apprentice each year, at least one apprentice each year. I see the CRC's element of that process is key, not only to find them and filter out the characters that we're looking for, those natural abilities, um, but also to help teach and help guide and help support us through that apprenticeship as obviously as well as supporting the apprentice. With regard to responsibilities for an apprenticeship, well, I think the first thing to do is to turn up keen as mustard um, and on time, I guess. Uh, uh, we're looking for apprentices that want to learn. Uh, we recognise that some will be nervous and it's a, it's a bit of a fish out of water scenario, but we're here to catch them and help them and support them. So we want an apprentice to turn up on time, clean, tidy, keen as mustard, ready to learn, willing ear, hard working and somebody who can see beyond that particular day can see what is, is coming in the future, what is available. So we need them to listen and work with our, our staff. They work with all sorts of members of staff and we do rotate the apprentices within the business so they experience different elements within the business. So it might be a couple of days with the storm and most of the time we'll be with an engineer, but we've got seven engineers on the road. So they'll go out with different engineers and learn different skills and um, time with me. Time with the accounts manager, and my wife, who's the accounts uh, um, director. Um, so we try and get a good range of skills off. Of, so that, that person, once um, they've settled down, they can get a good perspective on where their bit fits within the business and, and also what the progression possibilities are as well. When we're at the end of an apprenticeship, we, we, okay, we can formally say, that's it, apprenticeship over, we can or can't offer you a job. We've always offered our apprentices a job, but we've also given those apprentices the option to say, okay, you've done what you've done. Is there anything else in the business that you've seen that you would like to progress to? With regard to apprentices' characteristics and resilience, what's really important is that our service installation engineers, they will be going out in a vehicle on their own to individual sites. It might be a dentist a hospital, a food factory, a mechanical workshop. It might be um, a brand new building site where we're putting up pipe work and putting compressors in. And, and the, the apprentice needs to have the ability, whether it's immediately or throughout the apprenticeship, to have the confidence to be able to deal with the scenarios that, that he's, the challenges that he has day to day. He or she will be dealing with the site foreman We'll be dealing with other contractors on site. You might be working alongside another um, engineer. So um, hard working, being able to think for themselves, but as well as work as a team. Communication is key um, in any relationship, but particularly a business relationship between an apprentice and the people around an apprentice. As employers, if we don't invest in apprentices, the business will have no future, not just my individual business, but the industry. How, how are we going to bring people on unless we train them to do something properly? An engineering apprentice will work in the workshop. He'll be taught how to cut a piece of metal, how to file it, how to prepare it. And at the time when you do your apprentice, you might think apprenticeship, you might think, well, how's this relevant? But even now today, I cut metal, file it, 
turn it into a space of a washer or a bracket or something as part of my job. And that's something I was learning as an apprentice um, and learned to do it properly. An apprenticeship is a discipline from the day you sign on the dotted line to the day you hold that certificate in your hand to say, I've done it. The challenge to get from one end to the other is, is awesome. And uh, it, it, it's really important to have that formal training. And it's important for us to have those type of people that have got that ticket in their hand to come into the business and help me grow our business. The theory side of an apprenticeship is obviously very important. It becomes natural so in, in the end, so you kind of forget it's there in the background. It's what makes you make those decisions. It might be you learn about metal fatigue, you learn about the melting points of metal, you learn about mathematical equations, calculations, stresses. We put an ad out for a, a storeman um, and experience was required. But we had one lad who was a 17 year old local lad who applied. Now, he, he, this is, I guess, the beauty of not, um, not conforming to rules because we'd say, don't apply unless you've got experience. But he did apply and didn't have the experience. Cheeky, but he got a, he got a request to come and assist. So we said, look, uh, we sat him down. He said, uh, I, I, I said, well, I've, I've been made redundant from my paper round which is sad at 17. I do a little bit of uh, mechanical work with my uncle. He repairs cars, but he said, I'm looking for a job. Felt it was a mini me. It was where I was when I was 17. It was kind of just young and immature and, and, and didn't have the confidence. So I said, well, I can't take you on as a storeman, Leon, because you haven't got any experience, but we are in a position and we're looking for an apprentice. I said, I need to go to CRC go and talk to them and do this formally. I'll take your details and I'll come back to you. So a week or two later, we got back to him. We came down to King Hedges Road. He did a couple of simple tests and, and we gave him an apprenticeship. And to see him mature um, through life from this bumbling 17 year old as I was, through an apprenticeship, three years, four years, girlfriend, married, bought a house. He now has two children and he's the best engineer. He progressed so well before he finished his apprenticeship, other than experience, he was our best engineer on the books. He filled all his paperwork in properly. He did everything right. He was great with the customers. So I would consider that to be a success. I think to get into any job, you need to, you need to want it. Not, not need it because you have to earn so much money or you have to have this lifestyle. But to be successful, you really have to want it. It's inside you. It's, a, it's something you really want to do or you're inquisitive. Now, at 15, 16 years old, when you're at school, how do you know you want that? You haven't got the experience. So I would, I would say get as much experience as you can, however that be, whether that be work experience, whether it be working with aunts, uncles, mum, dad. If there's something you're interested in, go and knock on the door of that business and say, look, I'm really, I really want to learn about this. Is there anything you can do to help me? And I'd hope that the person answering that door is someone like me who sees that opportunity to bring that youngster in and just even just give them the experience. Once that youngster's got some experience, then that gives them more of a library of information to pick from, to choose from. Um, they might go, well, actually, no, that's not not for me, I don't like getting my hands dirty or I don't like the smell of whatever that might be, diesel or petrol or whatever it might be in the job or engineering fluid in a machining workshop or the noise. I don't like working as a team, I like working it, or I don't like working individually. That, they're the things that you learn and get experience for, but stick with it, I would say. If you're passionate about that, then you can do some research, get online, talk to people that are in the industry already, learn about the job, learn what about the possibilities, what the opportunities are, and just grab it with both hands. If you get an opportunity to shine, go and explain to the boss, whether it be an interview or knocking on the door and putting a letter together, good old fashioned letter, great, handwritten letter. I really wanna do this, I'm really keen. Um, that would be fantastic. If you get offered an apprenticeship, 
that that in itself, even though it's only a start of a career, what a great opportunity. And stay with it. An apprenticeship isn't easy. 